Welcome to the Stay Healthy El Paso podcast, where we help El Pasoans get away from taking pain medications, avoid getting injections, avoid surgery, and keeping up an active lifestyle. This podcast is presented to you by Dr. David Midoff, expert physical therapist and owner of El Paso Manual Physical Therapy. It is our goal and intentions to provide you with valuable tips and insights from experts in the El Paso area so you too can stay healthy, fit, and energized. Now here is your host, Dr. David. Hey, welcome to the Stay Healthy El Paso podcast. I'm your host, Dr. David Midoff, physical therapist, and I've got a special episode for you today. I've got with me here Lily. Lily is my physical therapy student. She's in her last week of her final clinical rotation. And so she's about to become Dr. Lily soon here, um, as long as everything goes fine with this podcast and, and we don't <laughs> automatically fail her. I'm just kidding. Um, but no, she's, doing, she's done fantastic. And um, I was so happy that she agreed to do this little interview to help out any students out there that are in physical therapy school that are looking to do a clinical internship at a manual therapy clinic like we are or a private pay clinic otherwise known as a cash-based clinic because um, we're both we're a private pay manual therapy clinic and um, so I just wanted to get her thoughts and her honest answers on what her experience was like so that if you're thinking of doing something like this then um, you can have it straight from from Lily here. So um, without further ado, hi, welcome Lily. Thanks for hello everybody coming on the show. Um, so let's get into it. So what what were you expecting prior to coming to this clinical rotation? You knew about us a little bit already. You explained about how you you knew through some friends about us. Um, what were, what were your thoughts prior to coming? Yeah. So. Um... Like you said, I had heard about you and my big sister in the PT program actually did her internship here. She said great things about it. She said she learned so much. And also when I was at my second rotation, my CI actually recommended you to one of our patients who needed some orthopedic work. So I just heard all around great things from you and I didn't know what to expect it being private pay and just manual therapy. I didn't know how you could just do manual therapy for the whole hour or whatever. But um, I was I was expecting just something new and something really good. I didn't know what to expect actually. Cool. I always just think some people get nervous or concerned because it's not your typical setting with, you know, with insurance and your, your um, gym setting as well sometimes people come into the clinic here because you, you actually visited us before starting your clinical rotation and oh yeah most people that come here for the first time they're like where's where's the treadmill where it's are all the very weights? different here <laughs> but I, I have a massage background so it being small and intimate it's very familiar to me with being a massage therapist so i don't i wasn't turned off at all i actually was welcomed by it mm. thought it was cool i knew it was gonna be different cool now we only take students in their last clinical rotation. What did you feel? How did you feel that that went for you? Did you feel like that was a good thing, or or like it maybe should have been different? What are your thoughts on on having to come here on your last clinical rotation? Well, I'm definitely glad I had the experience from prior rotations before coming here because, I mean, this is a hard rotation. So just even being able to talk to people about having to pay out of pocket and not using their insurance, having that experience from, you know, being able to talk to people and have rapport and all that from other rotations helped me out. Um, and then, of course, like some of the orthopedic background that I had and being comfortable with bodies that helped me out, too. But I honestly wish I had had this rotation first just so I could continue to use all the skills that I learned here at other clinics so that I could better help them. I felt that, you know, learning what I learned here now and then looking back on the experiences I had with other patients, I could have done so much more with them. But I mean, obviously, I, I feel like I needed that experience first to get here. Mm -hmm. And now just having this experience, I'll just be better whenever I start as a clinician. Yeah. So I, I feel it's appropriate. 
Yeah, I can see that for sure. And, you know, here in the clinic, we weighed, do we want to take students, you know, at the, at earlier in their clinical rotation, part of their education or, or later? And the main reason that we decided to, to take a student at the end was because, you know, at the beginning, you're, 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 you're probably aware of how to take goniometric measurements, do manual muscle tests, do other special tests, but you just don't have that many reps doing it. Mm -hmm. And because we are teaching students here pretty advanced stuff, we didn't, we'd rather spend our time on the advanced stuff, on the, on the cool manual therapy right. stuff instead of like, here's where the goni goes. <laughs> here's how you give force on a manual muscle test. And, um, and yeah, we didn't want to spend a bunch of time doing that. We figured it's, it's probably best if you do that at, at another clinic on, on your first or second rotation. Um, but, um, I went through that myself. I actually, my, my first clinical rotation was at a, at a pretty strong manual therapy clinic. And, and so I know what you went through where you're like, I wish I could have applied this. But what I ran into was I, my second clinical rotation and the, the one after that was not manual therapy based. Mm -hmm. And when I wanted to implement manual therapy techniques that I was comfortable doing, my CIs that weren't trained in manual therapy weren't comfortable allowing me to do it oh, because interesting. They, they couldn't monitor the effectiveness of it they couldn't right they, they, they didn't feel comfortable putting their license on the line in case something bad happened with the patient and and they weren't familiar with it so they weren't sure of what the side effects could be if any yeah so it was it was a little frustrating <laughs> on on my end but um i'm glad that you made it this far yeah. so how how do you think this was this whole experience going through your clinical rotation here in a in a manual therapy clinic? How was this beneficial for you and your practice as a future PT? Oh, this was awesome! I'm so glad that I had this experience because, I mean, you went through fellowship training and you had five extra years of advanced training after PT school, and I got your Cliff Notes, <laughs> <laughs> so I got that specialized training in a shorter amount of time and yeah I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna be as advanced as a fellow but I, I have that training and that some of those techniques that they use I feel comfortable with I probably won't ever get to that level that you are until I go through the program but at least I you know I feel confident and um, I know that my skills are way way more advanced than I ever could have imagined especially with manual therapy um, I just know that I'll be a better clinician overall. I feel confident just talking to people that I run into in everyday life that aren't patients and they have problems and they say, yeah, you know, I can't, I can't play soccer because I have a meniscus tear and I don't want to have a surgery. And I say, come in, have some PT because this is what we specialize in and I'm going to help you avoid surgery and you don't have to have the surgery. Let me help you. Mm -hmm. And if I hadn't have been here, I wouldn't have been as confident to say that, you know, I would have done the usual PT stuff, but now it's a lot more specialized and customized. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like I'm, I, I, I know I'm better off having this experience than if I had never had it. Nice. Awesome. I'm just going to inject what I went through as a, as a student going through my clinical rotations and I, I, once I figured out that I wasn't inpatient material, <laughs> that's just, I didn't know, honestly, when I started my, my clinical education, I didn't, I, I went into it with an open mind saying, maybe I'll like inpatient, maybe I'll like neuro, maybe I'll like outpatient, I didn't really know. And then once I discovered manual therapy, outpatient orthopedics, I fell in love with it and, and I had an inpatient rotation and I absolutely did not like it, did not like dealing with bodily fluids of any sort, <laughs> just wasn't my thing. Wound care, forget it. And, and so I, I, I got deep into the outpatients, outpatient part of things. Um, but it's, it's, oh, it's just so difficult to get specialist training throughout. And then I, I felt like my out, all my outpatient clinical rotations were very similar and I didn't really mm -hmm. learn much. I felt like I learned more about coding for, you right. know, CPT codes, um, you know, how to manage three four plus patients all at once and delegation yeah tech and an assistant <laughs> and and although that's a valuable skill it's not like directly clinical in my opinion you know mm -hmm. it's more so i mean it is clinical it's in like a sense managerial even 
Yeah, that's right. It is more managerial, uh, like managing people, which is important for the health of the patients that you're responsible for. But as far as you know, doing a technique or learning a new exercise or, or explaining you know, patient education, explaining something to a patient differently, um, that's not something that I that I quite got when I did three outpatient orthopedic rotations that were all very similar. <laughs> yeah, no, this is a whole new world. It's it's elite. It's specialized for sure. The manual therapy and I'm just grateful that I got the opportunity to catch a glimpse of it and see if I want to further my education and become a fellow one day. I don't know. Who knows? But you're right. So I forgot how fresh and green I was during the first rotations. And when you were talking about, you know, CIs having to say, this is where the goni is. And, you know, just getting wow. reps in and doing range of motion and all that basic stuff. Yep. I'm glad I had that elsewhere because we were able to focus on the good stuff and we mm -hmm. we were able to get into like the meat of orthopedics and manual therapy. So yep. yeah, it's, it's been awesome being a part of that. Good. So what do you think was the hardest thing for you to learn here? So definitely doing manual therapy on Dr. David Midoff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty small and he's pretty big. So the the mismatch of our bodies, it was, it was a workout <laughs> for sure every time. And I really had to adjust to his body type. But I think that also helped me because patients that we get in everyday life, they're going to be bigger than you or smaller than you or whatever. So you have to be able to adjust and modify. And I definitely got really good at modifying <laughs> Oh. with working with you specifically um but yeah i think also just building up my endurance to do manual therapy for a whole hour you know mm -hmm. because we're used to doing it on one body part and then that's it you do 30 seconds to a minute but now you have to be efficient and be able to run through different parts of the body and mm -hmm. building my endurance to be able to do an hour i think mm -hmm. I, I was pretty comfortable with it also saying that I have, you know, mentioning that I have the massage background, mm -hmm. but being able to work on a bigger body type and do manual therapy for an hour, that was, that was pretty hard. Um, also discovery visits here were hard. <laughs> being able to talk to a patient and explain to them and educate them mm -hmm. the way that we educate here, I think it's really cool. We pull out pictures from the Netter book and show them exactly what's going on in their body, show them how this happened and then being able to talk to them in the way that they're going to listen or respond. Mm -hmm. I learned that from Dr. David here. And that's something that I didn't think I'd ever learn at a PT clinic. Yeah. <laughs> you and know, for context, a discovery visit is, is basically like the initial consultation. We're just meeting the patient for the first time and letting them know if we can help them or not so that they can decide if they're going to work with us, um, you know, hire us and, and, and uh, begin treatment with us. And it's it's a critical visit just because we're we're building a relationship, we're diagnosing their problem, you know, doing our, our physical therapy diagnosis, and then kind of setting some expectations about how we can help them out and and what to do. And um, if you if you think of like a sales talk, mm -hmm. that's kind of what it is. It's not not in the sense of like it's a car salesman. I think whenever I say the word sales, people automatically think of a cheesy car salesman. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you could talk about it. It's 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 literally just sharing your knowledge with somebody. Yeah, I think that was like the biggest thing is like we have such a large knowledge base and people don't know that stuff. And to us, it's kind of common knowledge, you know, especially other PT students and other PT programs. But when you start telling them like, hey, yeah, I worked with cadavers and I looked at this tissue in real life, like mm -hmm. I see in your body and I was able to see it and you share that with them. They're like, wow you know that you went through that mm -hmm. and that's part of you selling even though you're not trying to be cheesy like you said mm -hmm. but it it is kind of dabbling in sales but it's just being genuine and sharing what you know which is it's a lot we know a lot <laughs> about oh. the body so um but i think the difference here is you're you're trying to get them to buy in and actually take money out of their pocket because they're not using insurance here Mm -hmm. And that I think was kind of hard for me at first, but you know, with the right coaching and getting reps, I was pretty confident mm -hmm. after about like six weeks or so. Yep. 
Yeah, about halfway through. So she did a 12 week clinical here just to give you the, the context. And the first half was pretty much like familiarizing yourself with the concepts, <laughs> you know, getting grilled all the time. Oh, yeah. I was in the hot seat a lot. <laughs> Quizzed, um, checking her hands on skills, making sure. So from a clinician perspective, from a from a um, CI perspective, like the, the, her instructor, what I was doing during those first six weeks was gauging, you know, how fast she can go, how much information can she take, how good is she applying what I'm teaching her so that then I can determine how fast can I let her loose on on clients independently. From the get-go, she was touching patients and doing special tests. I was getting her involved in, in feeling certain things, doing some of the treatments as well. But as far as me stepping out of the room, because we do treatments in rooms, we're, we're essentially in a in a in one room we're not in an open clinic so i can't mm -hmm. keep an eye on on everybody as we're doing stuff so it's a little tricky from a clinician's from a ci's perspective because i don't want to be a, a fly on the wall the whole mm -hmm. time it's kind of awkward when it's just a small room and a table and and the, the therapist so i needed to feel confident that lily could step in handle business and i could step out and mm -hmm she's got it from beginning to end and and she aced that she did really good but yeah it took a lot of a lot of coaching and training and on her part on her part just putting in the effort and making sure that that she was confident and, and we had a lot of discussions about confidence along the way too that was a, a big concern of mine yeah. um so you, you definitely have to come in i think with a certain level of confidence and mm -hmm. and be ready to to stand on your on your knowledge base and your 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 skill level mm -hmm. and then go home and practice for sure, because I did that a lot. Tell us more about that. What was that like for you? Like well, how many, how much time? How how did it go? Um. So, I remember one of the things you had put on like the the you. So you gave me a packet on how to prepare before I even got here, and one of the things that I read was practice your manual manual therapy skills five to ten minutes every day, and I really took that to heart. And I was like, no, I really really need to practice this. So I, I'm lucky I have a massage table at home, you know, so treatment table. And I remember like the first week I would go home and I'd write down concepts of like mechanics of the neck or the sacrum just to get those concepts down. That way, whenever I come in and I, you know, have to talk through with Dr. David and tell him like, no, this is where the restriction is. I know because this is how it moves and this is how it works and I'd have to visualize that at home that way I can come in here and you know be able to say it without looking like I don't know what I'm saying <laughs> so I'd practice the knowledge of it and then I'd also practice on my husband and I would you know work with him and he lo he loved it <laughs> he loved me being here because every day I would go home and he thought it was a massage you know but I'd be looking at joint integrity and assessing stuff so yeah at least every day um and then whenever on the weekends I'd be with my family I'd work on different body types mm -hmm. I know we talked about that too how that was important so my niece and nephew got some hands-on work too <laughs> and then everyone wanted me to work on them so everyone liked me being here <laughs> yeah what, what she's referencing is just how you have to adapt your your body size, your hand, your, your body shape as well to the person that you're working with, which might was, which is obviously going to probably be a different size and shape than you. And, uh, like, you know, she really mentioned a, a while back about how I'm, I'm a big guy. I'm six two, you know, over 200 pounds. And, um, and Lily's what, five, two, five, three. Yeah. I'm five, three. <laughs> <laughs> She's a lot smaller than me. And so, um, you know, putting her, getting her to do a lumbar technique on me or a thoracic technique is, is pretty challenging. She can't even wrap her arms around me. So it's, mm -hmm. so it's a big deal for her to find adaptations, try it on different people. Cause yeah. she felt like she was failing all the time around me yeah. trying to do like a thoracic manipulation or something, but she could probably go knock it out easy on somebody her size. Or my niece home. and nephew, they loved it. They're like, put my back. <laughs> yeah. Those are, how old are they? They're, so one is 15 and one is 13. Yeah. So they're on their way to being an adult yeah they're, they're little Smaller. they're mini adults <laughs> but i did have that like click when i i think i even mentioned to you how i had been practicing and practicing and then one day i was practicing on my husband and it was like my hands were just doing it automatically uh -huh. and it was like 
an epiphany because I finally had that psycho motor skill where I was just like, I got it finally. Mm-hmm. And I think it was on the neck because that was one of the, the parts that I felt comfortable early on. And I was like, I just, I just know how to do it now. And I felt mm-hmm. so happy. And it wasn't right away. It wasn't even like after a week. It was like maybe after like three weeks. Mm-hmm. And it was a click where it was like, I finally got that manual skill down. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely how it works out where it, it needs to come on with, with multiple reps. You have to just keep going. That's why, that's why I tell people practice at home. Mm -hmm. And even while you're here, you know, practice at home before. And then even while you're here, practice at home when you're not here, Mm -hmm. uh, just that you're heavily involved in it. You're, you're thinking about it. I mean, you should literally be dreaming about doing mental therapy while you're here. That's going to help you out. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So we talked about the hardest thing. Well, what do you think was the easiest thing about being here? So the easiest thing for me personally, since I have the massage background, was the soft tissue mobilizations. I always felt pretty comfortable whenever a patient came in and, you know, they're like, oh, it's over here in this area. And after I had done you know, the usual mobilizations or even the soft tissue work that you had showed me, Mm -hmm. I was able to implement strategies that I knew and I was able to treat them and help them in a way that I felt was pretty effective. So soft Mm -hmm. tissue work for me has always been pretty easy. Um, And then just kind of talking to people, that's a big thing here. Mm -hmm. I know as PTs, we have to establish a relationship, but in order for them to want to come in, something that you taught me was make it fun for them, you know, kind of engage them and start talking about stuff so that they get their mind off of you, you know, literally grabbing their bone and moving it. So Mm -hmm. you're able to work freely. So that was pretty easy for me, just, you know, having that connection with patients. And I really enjoy that. I I love talking to my patients and talking about their dogs or their work or whatever is going on. Mm -hmm. Um, So that, that was, that was nice. It wasn't too hard. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I love that part about this, the way that we do things here, because we see clients for, it's completely one-on-one right? for an hour most of the time, and um, I mean, you really do develop almost like a family-type relationship with clients. I mean, you, you were just telling me before this how you had one client who had a death in the family, and then, yeah. you know, as we record this, we're in the middle of the coronavirus, coronavirus lockdown, so yeah. everybody's <laughs> gone through that as well. Um, so it's it's been stressful for, for patients uh, coming in here and um and they come to you like i i haven't even talked to some of these patients i've mm-hmm. barely talked to them the, the ones that you're working with just at the introduction and then and when they walk in for the subsequent visits they they barely say hi to me and they they're ready to go work with you yeah they're my patients for sure <laughs> <laughs> so i think that's pretty cool you developed that relationship we've been through a lot together and I think I was their emotional support. And whenever this happened with the coronavirus and people shutting down, I think they were kind of emotional support for me too, you know, some type (laughs) of normalcy. So Mm -hmm. it worked both ways. So what would you say was your favorite part of this clinical rotation? So my favorite part, um, aside from learning all these advanced techniques, was for sure getting treatment (laughs) Uh, dr david would have to show me the techniques and i actually had a sacral shift and i didn't know and i mean i had had low back pain but i mean i i'm a mother i have a three-year-old so i always thought like oh it's just because i had a kid and it comes and goes i just have low back pain for the rest of my life and then he's showing me this is how you assess you know with leg length discrepancy and you you look here and he's like oh you got a sacral shift and i was like wow fix it <laughs> <laughs> so he definitely definitely put his hands on me a few times i even had like a a knee problem mm-hmm. and you helped me out with that and i think even a neck problem so that was cool it was like getting some treatment out of it mm-hmm. Yeah, for me, it's, you need it because, well, obviously so that you, you feel good while you're working with patients. Yeah, the last right. thing I want for, is for you to be in pain doing that. But you also learn a lot from getting the treatment to see, to be the recipient, to, right. to get a ther- you know, somebody who knows what they're doing, their hands on you as somebody who's learning what the, how to do this stuff. Um, to see what it should feel like, to to feel the joint move, to because you have a different mind going into this, unlike somebody who's not in the medical field or, or isn't familiar with the type of mental therapy stuff that we do. They're they're not really paying attention to what to look for. But mm-hmm. you've been 
living and breathing this stuff for years now being since you started in PT school so yeah. you're very aware of what joint we're on how we're moving it what muscles influence and all the surrounding uh, topics regarding rehabilitating it so I, I see it as like it, yeah even if you didn't have a problem going on I need to do some of these techniques to you so that you can feel it yeah and, and that's pretty much how we progress through things whenever I'd show you a male therapy technique I'd say I do it to you and then you do it to me or somebody else mm -hmm. so that you can know what it's supposed to feel like and it helped me out because since I had the experience of feeling it first off knowing what the pain was like and then knowing what the treatment was like and feeling better afterwards I was able to explain it to my patients better mm -hmm. that way they know what to expect and I could even just have a story to relate to mm -hmm. you know and say hey you know I started working out here I started doing some deadlifts and I was always scared of using the bar and you know it's so heavy and i've never been a gym rat person i'm more of like let's go run and dance or do an activity more mm -hmm. cardio stuff and here i had to learn the importance of strengthening and mm -hmm. i mean obviously we know that in pt but it was at a different level it was more you know um i think you have a crossfit background so it was more kind mm -hmm. of like olympic style uh, lifts and um i started doing deadlifts here and my pelvic shift it shifted again even though he had fixed it so we went through treatment he helped me out with it and then I had a story to tell my patients like hey <laughs> look this is what happened to me and we could relate on a different level so it, it was cool having that experience and it was a tool for me to use with my mm -hmm. patients yep I was just I, I hadn't mentioned this to you but yesterday we when we ended the day we were covering an ankle technique uh -huh. And we covered a few techniques. One of those was an ankle technique, and and I hadn't reviewed that technique for myself in probably a year or more. Mm -hmm. And we went through the technique, and it, my ankle felt looser. You only did it on, on my right. And as the evening progressed, and even this morning, I didn't realize how how bad my how stiff my ankles were <laughs> until you until I've had my ankle loosened on the right because my my left ankle feels stiff now like i didn't no. realize how stiff it was <laughs> and my I've, if, even if i move my if i dorsiflex like i can feel my right ankle move up better here yeah and walking down the hall here in our in our building i just i'm like man my left ankle feels way stiffer than my right yeah so even for me it's it's it reminds me of how life is like how we forget that we have yeah. all these little issues and we live like that I've been running, I've been, you know, with all the yeah. coronavirus stuff, I've been running more. Uh -huh. And to think I've been running, missing probably five or ten degrees of dorsiflexion, <laughs> I'm a little angry now, so I'm going to have to get you to fix my ankle before <laughs> you're done with your last week here. Yeah, it's important to maintain your body, <laughs> right? I think that's the reminder. We all have to take care of ourselves. Yep. All right, we're almost done here. We're just going to ask you one more question before we wrap up. So what would you say to a PT student that's thinking about doing a clinical rotation at a, at a manual therapy focused clinic or a private pay clinic, one of the two, or a combination of the two like we are here, what advice would you give or, or what kind of heads up would you give them? So definitely be confident, especially at this setting, and then just own your knowledge. Uh, I think I was telling you earlier, is know your bleep. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, your S word, insert S word. Insert S word. <laughs> As a student, I think you would relate. Just know your stuff. Um, I think coming in here, we all feel like we know anatomy, but Dr. David would put me on the hot seat and he'd be like, oh yeah, so what's the insertion here? And what's the nerve here? And <laughs> what about, how does it move here? <laughs> and I really had to just, you know, think and say my answer and he'd be like, are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> And then I would second guess myself and he's telling me to look it up and I was right. <laughs> and he was just making sure that I knew my stuff. So I think that's the biggest thing is just be confident. Never stop looking at your textbooks. Never stop learning and be open. For sure be open here because a lot of the things that we've learned that are like common concepts in PT school were challenged here and I know that one of the things that we had talked about was like conscious competence and in conscious competence and all these other ones but mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so what I felt I knew coming into this world this 
kind of exclusive world of manual therapy and fellowship training you have to be open to different concepts or seeing them in a from a different perspective so mm -hmm. i would say own your knowledge but at the same time be open to looking at it in a different way because mm -hmm. you you never know what you'll be limiting yourself to learning if you don't open yourself mm -hmm. so i just took everything like okay let me let me just accept it as it is so mm -hmm. i can learn the concept and then i think we talked about this too is like also kind of be able to question it and say is this the truth mm -hmm. so i would just say keep those things in mind and you'll do great here yeah i love it i think that's that pretty much sums it up with the best way to come in is with it with an open mind um and i i ran into that my first clinical rotation i I was always a good student and so I learned all the orthopedics stuff really, really well in PT school and I didn't really know about the different schools of thought in mm -hmm. PT because I, I was oblivious to it. I just didn't know and um, I, I was one of those students. I remember, I'll never forget the first week or, or two of PT school. One of the professors said, who here has had PT? And I looked around and almost everybody raised their hand except me. I had never been uh -huh. to physical therapy so I didn't really know what it was fully like besides my volunteer hours. Right. Um, so I, I was unaware of all the, like I never hung out in the PT clinic for more than I needed to. Um, so anyways, when I, when I went to my first clinical rotation, I was bringing in all the stuff that I learned from PT school in orthopedics and mm -hmm. it was a manual therapy clinic. And, and I, I almost, I, I kind of butted heads with my, with my clinical instructor. That's just kind of my personality. I, I was <laughs> wanting to Tell him I wanted to be right is what it was, and and he was the same. And I'm so I'm so glad that his name was Paul. He, he um, uh, Paul Payjack. He did a good job of of uh, standing his ground against me and and uh, kind of getting my face sometimes and being like, this is how it is. I'm telling you. And I once I finally said, all right, I'm gonna let go of what I think is right and just trust you fully because you're the PT and you're very studied in all this stuff. I was able to start to to feel certain joints move that I could never feel before yeah. or see movement in a way that I hadn't seen. And, um, and what I remember telling myself is even if it's completely wrong, what, what they're showing me, I'm just going to do it to at least get a good grade right? and pass my clinical rotation. But at the, you know, what's the worst I'll learn what not to do. So, um, I went in, I went into it with that kind of mentality and, um, I'll change my life. And I still, to this day, have an open mind about things because they're, there there's very few things in my opinion where there's like a hard and fast black and white like this is the right way to do it right definitely in physical therapy there's there's multiple way to do multiple ways to do things and rehabilitate people and learn and everybody's just unique and different in their learning styles and their body types and and so it's it, it needs to be all taken on an individual basis so keeping an open mind is a is a huge deal thanks for sharing that appreciate it yeah no problem you guys are welcome. <laughs> Any last words before we wrap up or you feel like you got it all out? Yeah, no. I mean, if you guys come here, you guys are definitely going to not regret it. And you guys will be <laughs> better PTs. And I will definitely trust you way more if I'm ever your patient. <laughs> if I know that you had a rotation here. Oh, thanks, Lily. I appreciate your time so You're much. You're welcome. Hey guys, thanks for listening. I appreciate your, you listening. And um, if you're a PT student out there um, and you want to do a clinical rotation at our clinic specifically, um, you can give us a call at 915-503-1314. We are selective with, with um, who we take. There's an application process, so heads up on that. And, um, and of course, we have to okay it with your, with your uh, university, with your clinical, uh, uh, whoever's in charge of clinicals at your, at your university. Um, so get on it soon. It's not something that you can do kind of last minute on a whim. You have to plan it ahead and make sure you have all the paperwork lined up. And we do that on our end as well. Um, and then we need enough time to take you through the interview process. And we usually have a few applicants as well. And we can only take a select few at a time. So um, um, make sure you get on top of that. Um, but other than that, I wish you the very best day. And I hope you are learning a lot. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Stay Healthy El Paso podcast, brought to you by El Paso Manual Physical Therapy, where we help El Pasoans get away from taking pain medications, avoid getting injections, avoid surgery, and keeping up an active lifestyle. 
If you'd like to learn more about what El Paso Manual Physical Therapy can do for you, call 915-503-1314 or visit our website at epmanualphysicaltherapy.com. Mention this podcast for a free discovery visit valued at $100. If you enjoyed what you've heard, please be sure to leave a review on iTunes and follow the show on your favorite listening platform so you won't miss an upcoming episode. Tune in next time to get the best health tips from experts in the El Paso area.